I have a Polar's data frame over here that is using a lot of functions that are not defined in this notebook. Instead, I have this one little helper module over here, and they contain all of these super useful functions that click together nicely, such that I can build up a pipeline in my notebook, while also still allowing me to have one central file that has a lot of my utility functions. And there's a couple of reasons why this is a good idea. For one, that file with utility functions can go into Git and can be shared with my colleagues. And the nice thing here is that we, of course, could maybe reuse the reading in the data and cleaning the data function, such that all of our analysis is in the end pretty consistent. Another big benefit is that this also helps keep the notebook somewhat clean. If it's really clear that you're gonna be reusing a bunch of these functions all over the place, it's a better idea to have that in one spot than to repeat those functions over and over again in all sorts of different notebooks. So in general, there are really good reasons to consider organizing your code this way. But as you use modules, for your utility functions, you might hit this one phenomenon, and that is that maybe there was a mistake in one of these functions, and then you would like to maybe update it, and then it would be nice if you weren't forced to restart this notebook in order to benefit from the updated function in your helper file. So just to emphasize the current setup locally, I have this one file over here called helpers.py, and you can read that there's a read data function, there's a set types function, clean data function, etc. But then at the bottom over here, I have this one function called remove bots. And in this particular case, this one function has a bug in it. Whenever there is a row in my data set, I should count 10 minutes or so. So if I wanna turn number of rows into hours, then I should multiply that by six, not by five. So this is a function I would like to fix. And when I hit save, it'd be really nice if the notebook can automatically update without me having to completely restart the notebook. Now to configure this, you can use the bottom bar over here. Just like you can specify the behavior on startup and the behavior on cell change, you can also specify the behavior on a module change. In its default behavior, it is turned to off, but you can set it to auto run. And this way, whenever I hit save on that one file that has all of my helper functions, then the notebook will automatically update as a result. So let's demonstrate this. And again, for good measure, the on module change setting over here is set to auto run. And now I'm gonna change this number from five to six. So this was five before, that's wrong. Set it to six and hit save. And after a brief moment, you should have seen the cells over here update. And uh, maybe just one more time for good measure. Let's just change this to eight, just to emphasize a example. And if I go back here now, you can see that cells actually go and run. This utility can be very useful, especially if there's a moment when you don't wanna have all of your code in the notebook. And there are plenty of good moments for those. Now, finally, if you wanna take this a step further, besides setting the updates to run automatically whenever you make a change to the module, you can also set it to become lazy. Now, I can uh, still make a change. I hit save, but you'll notice that we suddenly aren't running everything automatically anymore. We now have manual control. So it's clear that an update has happened. You can see that the colors have changed of these cells, but now I have very tight manual control over which cells run when. I can also still choose to run everything automatically by hitting this yellow button over here, but having this manual control can be useful in some scenarios, especially if heavy compute might be involved. So there you have it. If you have a helper's file, we do have utilities that make it easy for you to control when something runs. But if you are interested to learn more about this, we also have utilities that allow you to control when an update of a cell updates another cell. And I've added a link in the show notes to that video. So feel free to check that out if you're interested.